students uh, so in the last class we have studied about different types of bearing capacity failures and the types of bearing capacity failures are general shear failure local shear failure and punching shear failure and general shear failure is the most common type of shear failure which is occurring in soil okay so today we can discuss about the tersagi's bearing capacity theory so before going into that theory we can uh, study about or we can recollect the, the types of foundation that you have studied in your basic civil okay so uh, the foundation mainly classified as shallow foundation and deep foundation and this classification is based on the depth of the foundation and the width okay that is in the case of shallow foundation the uh, the depth is usually uh, equal or less than its width the depth will be less than or equal to its width it is known as shallow foundation so, so this classification is given by tersagi so according to tersagi a foundation is shallow if its depth is equal to or less than its width so examples of shallow foundations are spread footing combined footing strap footing mat foundation or raft foundation so deep foundation means uh, the foundation in which the depth is very large in comparison to its width and the examples are uh, pile foundation pier foundation caisson so well foundation so this is the classification of foundation based on the depth and width so this is the classification that is if uh, depth of foundation is uh, less than or equal to it it is known as shallow and the examples are uh, different types of footings and deep foundation in deep foundation the depth will be very much greater than that of the width and pile pier etc are the examples okay so next is tersagi's bearing capacity theory so before going uh, before moving to uh, this theory uh, we can discuss the assumptions which is uh, taken for this theory okay so first one depth of foundation is less than or equal to its width so uh, the uh, footing considered here is or the foundation considered here is uh, shallow foundation okay that is tersagi's theory is applied for shallow foundation only that is depth of the foundation is less than or equal to its width okay. the next is base of the footing is rough that is footing base is assumed as rough surface then uh, third assumption soil above the bottom of the foundation has no shear strength that is it is only a surcharge load against the overturning load that is the soil above this foundation so here it is the footing and this this q is the load which is transferred to the footing and this uh, load will be usually from the superstructure or the building okay and this load is finally transferred to the foundation and uh, the foundation transfers it into the soil on which it is resting and the third assumption is the soil above the base of the footing that is the uh, soil up to this portion up to this depth df uh, has no shear strength so it is considered as surcharge weight okay so that is the third assumption then fourth assumption surcharge up to the base of the footing is considered that is uh, here surcharge weight is considered up to the base of the footing so for this depth the next one load applied is vertical and non eccentric that is the uh, applied load is vertical load and we are not taking any eccentric load then the soil is homogeneous and isotropic then l by b ratio is infinite okay so these are the assumptions which is taken by tersagi for deriving the equation for bearing capacity Uh, so, uh, so in this figure, this figure is uh, given in order to uh, familiarize you the term DF. So, DF means depth of footing. Okay. So, depth of footing means it is the depth between the ground surface or ground level and the base of the footing. Okay. So, this is the base of the footing and this is the ground level. So, the distance between these two points is actually depth of foundation, which is marked as D suffix F DF. Okay. And uh, next is uh, Q, uh, that is surcharge weight, Q will be equal to, the surcharge weight is due to this soil, soil at this portion, that is soil for a depth df. So, that uh, surcharge uh, pressure will be equal to unit weight of the soil, uh, the surcharge uh, soil and the depth of footing df. Okay. Next, uh, Terzaghi's method of determining bearing capacity. Okay, so in syllabus it is uh, specified that the derivation is not required. Okay, so I am uh, just uh, explaining the equation which is derived by Tersaki. For that he has considered a figure like this that is uh, there is a footing and the depth of footing 
that is depth between ground level and the base of the footing is df okay so this is the depth of footing and the load is transferred uh, uh, vertically into the footing and this small letter b is the width of the footing okay and uh, here general shear failure condition is considered so in the case of general shear failure we have studied that there are uh, mainly three different sounds are clearly visible that is sound one is created here and by creating this uh, sound uh, creating this sound that is sound one it will pushes the sound two and sound three sideways and then upwards that is a general shear failure condition so here the, the three sounds are clearly visible so it is a type of general shear failure okay and here uh, the depth of footing df below the ground surface and df is less than or equal to b that is here we are considering shallow foundation the analysis for a strip or continuous footing is based that is uh, tersagi has derived the equation for strip footing or continuous footing okay and uh, uh, this paragraph explains that is there are uh, three sounds one two and three and these three are clearly visible okay and considering unit length of the footing and equilibrium of the wedge abc that is by uh, considering the equilibrium of this wheel this uh, wedge uh, tesagi has derived the equation okay and proceeding step by step uh, in considering the effect of cohesion weight of the wedge and surcharge due to the depth in mobilization of passive resistance that is by considering these three parameters that is the effect of cohesion then weight of the wedge and surcharge he has derived into a equation that is ultimate bearing capacity q u or q alt okay q u is equal to c n c plus gamma d f into n q plus 0.5 gamma b n gamma where n c n q n gamma are the bearing capacity factors these are constant and these constant that is n c n q and n gamma are known as bearing capacity factors and these factors depends upon the value phi only phi means angular shear resistance so uh, for different values of angular shear resistance uh, the value of n c n q n gamma is given in a chart okay so in exam it will be given that is for a particular value of phi so if uh, phi is uh, 25 there will be three values for nc and q and n gamma that is one value for nc one for n q and n gamma like that for different angles there will be uh, values for this bearing capacity factor okay and it will be given and uh, first command that is i have told that uh, tessa has derived this equation for first cohesion component so this is the cohesion component that is here the term c is known as uh, cohesion component that is unit cohesion c and c is constant next component that is uh, gamma df so this gamma df is actually the surcharge component this in here we have explained that gamma df is the uh, surcharge component due to the soil here okay so the second term is uh, actually the weight of the wedge that is uh, we are considering the weight of the soil for this depth okay so the second component is actually the weight of the uh, wedge so this is uh, this is actually q q n q or gamma df into n q okay plus last term is surcharge due to the depth of mobilization of passive uh, resistance so this component 0.5 gamma b n gamma here the uh, component b comes that is width okay so this is the equation c means cohesion gamma is the unit weight of the soil df depth of footing and b is the width of footing so you should by heart this equation this is the be uh, bearing capacity equation for strip footing which is derived by tersagi so this is the tersagi's bearing capacity equation for strip footing or continuous footing that is q u is equal to c n c plus gamma df into n q plus 0.5 gamma b n gamma okay so you should by heart this equation based on this problem will be asked then uh, so i have told that the uh, the bearing capacity factors nc nq n gamma depends only on angular shear resistance phi and the bearing capacity factors have been computed for several values of phi ones and for all and are given in the form of charts okay this chart is available in uh, any geotechnical uh, textbook that is in uh, aurora uh, the chart is the in the next slide i will share the chart okay so for problem we are, we want that uh, values so in uh, university exams this value will be given otherwise the, they will give the chart okay then uh, based on this equation uh, we can uh, apply this for some types of soil that is for purely cohesive soil 
that is for purely cohesive soil uh, this phi will be equal to 0 that we, that you have studied in G1 part that is there is cohesive soil and cohesionless soil ok for cohesionless soil C cohesion unit cohesion C will be 0 for cohesive soil anglo shear resistance phi will be 0 phi is equal to 0 ok so for phi is equal to 0 the values of n c n q and n gamma are like this that is if anglo shear resistance phi is equal to 0 n c is equal to 5.7 n q is equal to 1 and n gamma is 0 this is given in the chart but you should by heart the value of n c n q and n gamma for phi is equal to 0 ok this value you should by heart because for pure uh, purely cohesive soil phi is equal to 0 and this value is like that n c n q and n gamma so in uh, in some case uh, for phi, if phi is equal to 0 this values n c n q n gamma will not be given so it should be by heart ok that is for phi is equal to 0 n c is equal to 5.7 n q is equal to 1 and n gamma is 0 ok so when uh, by substituting uh, this in the basic equation c n c n c means 5.7 n c is equal to 5.7 so first uh, first term will become 5.7 c ok plus gamma df into n q is 1 so uh, 5.7 c plus gamma df plus n gamma is 0 so uh, third component is 0 here ok and here so that is the case here that is for strip footing at a depth df in a purely cohesive soil q u is equal to 5.7 c plus gamma df ok that is the third term is 0 since n gamma is 0 ok and here also if the uh, if you are calculating the bearing capacity on the surface of the uh, of the ground the in that case this df will be 0 so there is only one term that is 5.7 c ok so this is the uh, special case for purely cohesive soil the uh, equation of bearing capacity ok and next is critical load per unit length and critical load is uh, noted as capital Q and if we want to calculate the critical load we have to multiply the ultimate bearing capacity with the width of the footing that is width B into Q ultimate is the critical load per unit length Q alt capital Q ok. So, so this is the equation for uh, strip footing ok. Next is the Tersagi's bearing capacity uh, for different types of footing like circular footing and square footing that is when shape varies, shape and size effect that is both the shape and the size of the footing affect the bearing capacity ok. So when uh, shape and size of the footing vary equation also vary and based on the analysis of experimental data available and also theoretical consideration uh, Tersagi proposed the following equations which include these effects that is uh, by uh, including the shape and size effect. So first is the equation for circular footing. So the previous equation is for strip footing or continuous footing that is Q ultimate is equal to C and C plus Q and Q plus 0.5 gamma B and gamma and for circular footing in the first term uh, there is a uh, there is the uh, there is a numerical uh, uh, 1.3 that is equation is QU is equal to 1.3 CNC plus gamma DF into NQ plus 0.3 here 0.3 in the previous equation it is 0.5 ok so you should uh, by heart this equation this for circular footing Q ultimate is equal to 1.3 CNC plus gamma DF into NQ plus 0.3 gamma D N gamma ok. Uh, and here this D, D is the diameter of circular footing ok so here it is circular footing so in, in the previous one it is 0.5 gamma B and gamma here 0.3 gamma D and gamma D is the diameter of the circular footing ok and uh, if we want to calculate uh, the critical load Q ultimate is equal to 5 by 4 D square area into uh, ultimate bearing capacity QU okay. next is equation for square footing and here uh, equation is 1.3 cnc plus gamma df into nq plus 0.4 gamma dn gamma uh, here it is 0.4 here it is 0.3 and for strip it is 0.5 ok and for circular and square footing the first uh, term in the first term 1.3 will be the 1.3 ok so this is a equation for circular footing and square footing this equation also you should by heart the next case is so uh, Tersagi actually derived the equation of uh, uh, bearing capacity for general shear filler case ok so that is the equation for general shear filler 
and if the shear failure is in the form of local that is if it is local shear failure there is uh, two parameters two values that is c dash and phi dash that is c dash is the uh, mobilized caution c dash is known as mobilized caution and phi dash is known as mobilized angle of shear resistance that is in this equation it is uh, all the terms are in the terms of mobilized that is corresponding bearing capacity factors n c dash n q dash n gamma dash it will be less than those for general shear failure okay this, there is uh, there are different parameters uh, for local shear failure and in the case of local shear failure c dash is the mobilized uh, caution and it will be equal to 2 by 3 into c 2 by 3 into caution c is the mobilized caution so if the caution component is given you should multiply it with 2 by 3 then we will get c dash mobilized caution and put that c dash here that is c dash into n c dash here c dash is 2 by 3 into c Okay, it is given here. So, equation is C dash into N C dash plus gamma D F N Q dash plus 0.5 gamma B N gamma. And uh, C dash is 2 by 3 C. And tan phi dash is equal to 2 by 3 tan phi. Here, uh, for calculating uh, phi, angle of shear resistance phi, uh, we have to uh, find out 2 by 3 times tan phi. So, tan inverse of 2 by 3 tan phi will be equal to phi dash that is mobilized angle of shear resistance phi dash so uh, by calculating this phi dash uh, for for this values this value of phi dash we will get n c dash n q dash and n gamma dash from the chart okay so the change for uh, change in local shear failure is the uh, the component uh, the change is for the component c and phi that is c is 2 by 3 uh, c 2 by 3 into c caution and it phi dash is equal to tan inverse 2 by 3 tan phi that is the only change in the case of local shear failure okay so i think it's clear so next class we can do some problems then uh, this equation will be clear for you okay so you should read the textbook and uh, try to by heart this equation that is the three equation that is uh, first first one equation for strip footing sorry equation for strip footing that is uh, q ultimate is equal to cnc plus gamma df nq plus 0.5 gamma b and gamma then for circular footing the equation is 1.3 cnc plus gamma df nq plus 0.3 gamma d n gamma and for square footing it is 1.3 cnc plus uh, gamma df nq plus 0.4 gamma d n gamma okay so today's text is over thank you